in Millennials Ruin Everything News. Let's take a look at some of the reasons millennials are allegedly killing every business. So millennials get a lot of flack, and one of them is that they are killing all of these industries. All right, first off, I want to say that it's terrible goddamn trigger discipline, all right? On, on some serious shit, that is fucking Oh, I don't give a fuck how hot you are. I don't care if you're sitting there blowing on the goddamn gun. Yo, look here, that is terrible trigger discipline, and you treat every gun like it's motherfucking loaded and never point it anywhere near your person or somebody else's. Gun safety is fucking important. But secondly, have all y'all motherfuckers heard about how millennials are killing everything? I found out about something here recently. Yo, Ford's discontinuing all their sedan models, other, other, all their cars except for uh, the Focus ST and the fucking Mustang. Um, Scion's fucking gone. Honda's killing fucking shit. Toyota's killing stuff. All these car industries are, are killing cars. And I mean, basically, the sedan's going the way of the Dodo Bird. Man, listen. I want to do a little research and see what was going on. So without further ado, let's get into this shit. All right, so if y'all showed up for the bag on millennials hour, you know, I mean, that's not what this is going to be. All right. This is going to be an intellectual breakdown of really where we are and how we got here. And I wanted to stand here and have the opportunity to have a conversation about shit because I'm a little older than some of y'all and I'm not as old as some. But I believe that the more money we print, you know, I mean, without being able to tax and, you know, pay for shit and the fact that we shipped all of our jobs overseas in the past, you know, I mean, 30 or 40 years and we used slave labor and, you know, we bought shit on credit all the time and had a massive amount of money get created. Okay. And it has caused a monstrous amount of fucking problems inside of our society, including things like stagnant wage growth, you know, I mean, increased cost of housing, increased cost, you know, I mean, of basic goods, which has led to this point of where millennials aren't buying anything because they can't afford to get past square one. You know, I mean, we can talk about college all you want to because 50 fucking percent of y'all went to college, which I think y'all are retarded for doing. But I think it goes much deeper than that right there. It goes really into a whole different level and a whole different ball game where you know you look at these numbers and they're so fucking astronomical for some very very basic things that you really honestly can't really even think about surviving at this fucking point so you know let's start off with looking at where we are with you know i mean how many cars have been sold right you know i, I found this statistic right on how many cars were sold year over year right since like 1990 and it starts off where like i actually saw the whole statistic from like 1951 the whole way up through and the truth of the matter is is that really it went from like 9 million cars sold to like where we are today at 17 million from 1951 to the 17 where we are now or 14 whatever the case might be you know back in the 90s in the 2000s we were selling the same amount of cars that we're selling right now right but then you look at this next chart is the population growth right where in the 1990s we only had, we only had 220 million people in 1990 in america and today we have 325 million people and we're selling the same amount of vehicles that's a conversation you know what i mean that needs to be had it's not so much that millennials are murdering shit is that they really can't afford to get it you know i mean i mean it's you know there's something you know i mean rotten in the state of denmark right so i wanted to keep moving on and looking at other statistics right you know what i'm saying like for instance how much money has been fucking created you know i mean over the past you know i mean whatever fucking past like 20 30 years and uh, you know i got this graph on the m2 money supply right here which is goddamn ridiculous you know what i mean like the, the sheer amount of money that has been created out of thin air it is fucking nuts and then once you really get to looking at how 
everything really is, you know what I mean, how <coughs> how your debt is held, right? Which is something else utterly and completely, right? You know what I mean? Like, when you look at it and you go, holy shit, your debt is held by weird people. You know what I mean? You got to check this out right here. All right, since we're talking about why the fuck it is we are where we are at the moment, I wanted to sit here and I want to show you something real quick. All right, so the U.S. debt was $20.5 trillion as of December 31st, 2017. This is an article from called uh, Who Owns U.S. National Debt? The biggest owner is you. The U.S. debt was $20.5 trillion as of December 31st, 2017. Most headlines focus on how much of the United States owes to China, one of the biggest foreign owners. What many, many people don't know is Social Security Trust Fund, a.k.a. your retirement money, owns most of the national debt. Right. So how does this work and what does it mean? The debt is in two categories. The U.S. Treasury manages the U.S. debt through its Bureau of Public Debt. The debt falls into two broad categories, intergovernmental holdings, right, which is right here, and debt held by the public, which is 72% right here, right? Intergovernmental debt, this is the portion of the federal debt owed to 230 other federal agencies. Intergovernmental holdings total 5.7 trillion, 2.8% of the debt. Why would the government own money to itself? Some agencies like the Social Security Trust Fund used to take in more revenue, I should say used to, than they need. Rather than stick this cash under a giant mattresses, these agencies buy U.S. Treasuries with it. By owning Treasuries, they transfer the excess cash to the general fund where it is spent. Of course, one day they will redeem their Treasury notes for cash. The federal government will either need to raise taxes or issue more debt to give the agencies the money they will need. Now, which agencies own the most U.S. own the most Treasury? Social Security by a long shot. The U.S. Treasury published a report as of December 31st, 2017. The data is in a monthly Treasury statement. It is updated quarterly. All right. Here is a breakdown. Do, 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 do. I don't know where the hell the fucking things are, man. There should be like some stuff right here. Right. Anyway. Right. Social Security Trust Fund and Federal Disability Insurance Trust Fund. 2.820 trillion dollars. Well, let's keep this all the way funky right here. That's about two years spending for Social Security. So there's not a lot of cushion there. Office of Personnel Management, 884 billion. Military Retirement Fund, 742 billion. Medicare, which includes the Federal Hospital Insurance Trust Fund, Federal Supplementary Medical Trust Fund, 202 billion. All our retirement funds and cash on the hand, cash on hand to fund federal government operations, 606 billion. Public debt. The public holds. God damn it. The public holds the rest of the national debt of 14.8 trillion. Foreign governments and investments hold almost half of it. One close to one fourth is held by other governmental agencies. These include the Federal Reserve as well as state and local governments. 16% is held by mutual funds, private pension funds, and holders of savings bonds and treasury notes. The remaining 7% is owned by businesses like banks and insurance companies, which also held by an assortment of trust companies and investors. Come on, man, go down. All right. The U.S. Treasury pu published a breakdown of this. All right, come on, man. All right. So foreign at 6.285 trillion at that time. China owned 1.84 trillion, and Japan owned 1.6 trillion, 1.06. Right. And that's more than one third of federal of foreign holdings. The Federal Reserve owns $2.4 trillion, mutual funds $1.78 trillion, state and local, private pension funds, banks, insurance companies, whatever. Now, here's the thing, right? The debt, right, it's also, da, 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 this debt held by Social Security and retirement pension funds, almost half of U.S. Treasury debt is held in trust for your retirement. If the United States defaults on its debts, Foreign investors would be angry, but current and future retire retirees would be hurt the most. So, here's the thing, right? The problem is, is that one day, you know what I'm saying, the bill's going to come fucking due. And that day's coming here real fucking soon. As to when the hell we're going to have to fucking pay fucking Social Security back for the money we fucking owe, right? 
And they go, at that point, either A, they're going to have to raise taxes, or B, they're going to have to fucking print more goddamn money. And this is really the breakdown of what the fuck is really going on and why we're at the situation where we are right now. Alright, there's a couple more things that I wanted to include in this that I forgot in the fucking, like, my first, my second part of my recording. So, I also wanted to talk about the median home price, which I fucking saw recently and it just boggled my fucking brain that this was this fucking high. So, the median average home price right now is I want to repeat myself $334,000 fucking dollars and here's the thing if you look at how much money we make alright and how much money we've made over the past 20 some fucking years right like right here there's a chart yo we haven't made a dime more a dime really in, in fucking 18 20 30 years I'm like 30 fucking i'm 35 to 77 74 some shit like that so it's like almost 40 fucking years we haven't had a goddamn raise and the median home price has gone up this goddamn fall it's fucking insanity i just wanted to throw that shit in there so Can we blame millennials? Well, number one, yes, remotely. Number two, you you can't. But we have to have a conversation about the solution to these fucking problems, right? Because the only real solutions is to take that weight upon yourself and say, look, we can't continue on in the manner in which we're going right now, right? Like, that's just not something that's fucking possible for us to continue doing. Like, we're going to end up having... To fucking make a change. You know what I mean? And something has to give. Socialism is not gonna motherfucking work. Let's keep that all the way funky real quick, alright? Socialism is not something that's gonna goddamn fucking be able to help us. So, we need to start thinking about how we want to live. Everything is up for grabs right now. Me personally, I think we should close the goddamn borders completely. Throw all the immigrants the fuck out of the goddamn country. And and figure this shit the fuck out. Okay, because we need home prices to go down, we need wages to go up, we need the opportunity to be able to fucking strike and collective bargain to be able to get better fucking wages. We need to start exporting fucking goods again. We need to start sending things overseas and that means people need to start working in factories. We're going to need different shit. That's my plan personally. I think that's the best way to fucking do it because that's the way to get it done the best and the easiest and the quickest and the simplest with the least amount of fucking pain. Yes, and we need to repeal the fucking 19th Amendment, but you know, that's a whole different fucking discussion at the moment. All right, that's a very small portion of this. You know, I mean, that's like step one and then like, we got like fucking 800 steps after that to get back to where we need to be at because what their plan is is just to replace us with fucking third world labor who will just continue to fucking work because we're living hand to mouth and they'll work for fucking nothing because that's really what we've been doing because they can't replace truck drivers they can't replace fucking retail workers they can't they can't replace all these individuals out here who do work but you know what I mean? We, they can't ship those jobs overseas, so they're just planning on bringing the people from overseas here to do the fucking jobs. Because they don't want to pay anymore. Because the truth is, if they let wages grow the way it's supposed to fucking grow, and we don't have fucking immigration to cover up for their fucking bullshit, well, my friends, you know what I'm saying? It would actually expose what the fucking situation is and where we really fucking are. But nobody wants to talk about that. You know what I mean? So... Maybe we need to have a conversation about every fucking thing. And I'm not saying fractional reserve banking is bad. You know what I mean? None of this bullshit. That's not the situation. Because debt's the only thing that makes your money have fucking value. Because money is debt. But we can't continue on buying our own fucking debt and just standing here going, we'll pay it later. And putting the fucking weight on our grandkids and great grandkids because Lord knows that they're going to have the ability to pay it back. And we shouldn't saddle them with our fucking responsibilities and our problems. Just like your parents shouldn't have saddled you with this one. And I mean, my parents should have saddled me with the fucking shit that I have to deal with. So, that's where we are right now. 
and I wanted to have this conversation with y'all and drop this video because I know I ain't been grinding hard on here. I've been grinding hard in real life. It is what it is. Anyway, man, y'all enjoy your fucking Sunday. I'm going to try and do church today. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace be like one, man. Later.